Hey everyone, how's it going? Gamer Geek here, and today I've got another awesome weekly update video for you guys. This week has been pretty cool, with me mostly working on a community suggestion and working on implementing new features into the game. I've also been getting ready to premiere the voice audition callbacks in a gameplay demo for the community to vote on, working on a surprise involving comic books versus the world. I haven't actually told them the surprise yet, so if you're watching, surprise. Working on a ton of different videos to celebrate the Christmas season with our Geeks Vlogmas series, and also working on a side project to hopefully help some aspiring game developers out there. We'll be talking about all of this and more, so let's jump into the video. As always, check out the time codes in the video description if you want to jump around. Alright, let's get into it. Starting off, let's really quickly touch on voice audition callbacks. So I narrowed down the top three voice auditions for each character and privately messaged each person to let them know that they've been selected for a callback and request that they record the callback lines with the best performance they can give. To the rest of the community who auditioned but weren't selected for a callback, I'm sorry but don't get discouraged. There will be loads of other characters to audition for as the people get implemented to the game. So even though you weren't selected this time, you can always audition for a different character in the future. The game will have additional game modes where some minor voice acting will be required for every character, even the ones who aren't featured in the story. So be prepared for voice auditions in the future as more characters are introduced over time. As for the callbacks though, now is when things get interesting. Each of the top three voice options for each character will be put up in a blind vote for the community. All you as the community will get is samples of each voice numbered one through three for each of the characters. You'll listen to what they got and decide who sounds closest to the character being portrayed. It's important to take into their account their mic quality and audio quality, their ability to sound like the character, whether or not they capture the mannerisms of the character, etc. You'll be voting on who you'll end up listening to throughout this game moving forward, so it's important to pick who you think is best for the job and who can deliver the best performance possible. Moving past voice auditions, let's talk about what I've been working on. Recently I started working on several models for in-game locations that have yet to be implemented. At the moment, I'm working on modeling Star Labs, which I have to say is a very funky shaped building I've come to realize now that I'm modeling it. It's got the uh, three pointy bits on top. Did they ever explain what's in those or why they're there? What rooms could possibly be in those? There's the funny cylindrical base. You got some of those things sticking out of it and so on. The point is it's a goofy looking building. I never noticed while watching the show, but it's weird. It's a weird design. I'm saying it. It looks cool in the show, but man, what a weird building. And also, why'd it take them so long to fix the roof? You know how often it rains and shit in that city? You got expensive stuff in that building. Take care of your property, man. A recent community suggestion stood out to me, though, while I was working on Star Labs this week. Community member Fioslipe? Fioslip? Fioslipe? Fioslip. Suggested that I implement other locations into the map that have appeared in the show, which, while being one-offs, have been equally iconic throughout the series. Places like the football stadium where Barry first fights Thawne in Season 1, the Forest Shrine location where Team Flash fought Savitar in Season 3, or the various other labs and locations featured in the minor subplots throughout the series. I really like this suggestion as it would take my interpretation of Central City from being just another video game city to being THE Central City. So I'm definitely going to work on adding those different areas in over time. Modeling landscapes and buildings is never an easy job. It's pretty time consuming, so these locations will more than likely take a while to get into the game. I definitely think it'll be worth the time to work on them though, as it'd be really cool to speed around the map and see all these locations or even utilize them in game modes and side missions. Speaking of time consuming game features, let's talk about the combat system. This one is most likely going to be a bit of a pain to get right, mainly due to the targeting system I have planned. If you haven't seen my last video, then go watch it. Did you watch it yet? Well go, and don't skip the ads either, I need that ad revenue. Okay, now that you're back, I was basically saying in my last update video that the targeting system needed to track the locations of multiple enemies at the same time, rather than a single enemy like most other targeting systems. The targeting system will also then have to store or rewrite those locations as targets fall out of range or are knocked out. It will be a pain in the ass to get right, I'm anticipating a lot of trial and error as I test it out and make improvements, but it's going to be a ton of fun once I get it right. So aside from what's still a work in progress, let's talk about what's actually implemented and working right now. I added a radial menu for the player to switch between their various special abilities when playing the game without having to pause or disrupt the gameplay. I already know that I'm going to get a couple of complaints about the player only getting to equip one special ability at a time, but hear me out. With me making sure controllers are fully supported in Beta 2, I found that my game's controls became extremely limited given how they now have to translate from keyboard to controller. I could easily have every special ability assigned to various hotkeys on a keyboard without issue. Doesn't translate too well to a controller though. 
So, utilizing different game mechanics like the radio menu helps reduce clutter with the controller layout and hopefully makes it easy to use for the player. With the radio menu to switch between special abilities, in the same way the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game swap between web projectiles, players that game using a controller can play this game as easily as a keyboard and mouse gamer. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned I had a surprise involving my brother, comic books versus the world. I also mentioned I hadn't actually told him yet, so I guess this is more a surprise about him and to him at the same time. For those who didn't know, the game was my brother's idea to begin with. It all started when I showed him a basic Flash themed gameplay demo and he wanted to do a full Flash game based on the CW show. Because of that idea, we have built a fantastic community and grown the Gamer Geek channel faster than I ever thought would happen. If you didn't know already, and you probably did since most of my fans are also fans of my brother, my brother was involved with a different Flash fan game a little while back and also voiced one of the characters in the game. Well, I decided to incorporate my brother's voice acting into my Flash game, including him as both a community easter egg and as the character voice. This game was his idea to begin with, so I felt he should be a part of it in some way. Assuming he agrees to it, he'll be reprising his role as Savitar, and he'll also be a unique character tied to an in-game achievement. Hopefully he's on board with the idea and lends his voice to the project, because I think that would be such a cool experience for the community, to get comic books versus the world involved more, and for players to interact with him in-game. Moving forward, let's talk about what I've been working on for the channel. I'm working on a side project to help aspiring game developers. This was actually inspired by a post I saw online while browsing around on my phone. Someone said that they tried and tried and tried but couldn't figure out Unreal Engine and had decided to give up on developing their own game. I was about to skip past the post because there are a ton like it, with people getting frustrated about not understanding Unreal Engine, but they said something that caught my attention. They said they should be great at Unreal Engine because they've watched what they described as hundreds of hours of tutorials and followed all of them flawlessly. The issue wasn't that the tutorials they followed didn't work, they said that they actually worked flawlessly. It was that they didn't understand where to go after completing each tutorial. They would have half or nearly finished project after following a tutorial and couldn't do anything with it. They said that they would try to add other things to it, error warnings. They try to modify the code they copied from the tutorial, it would read as a bad blueprint. They didn't understand why they could follow along with a video and get perfect results, but trying to venture out on their own after learning from the tutorials always resulted in failure. Well, I think I have a solution. See, most tutorials, not all, but a good majority in my opinion, are extremely specific with their content. They teach you how to get from beginning to end with whatever the topic of the tutorial is, but is it really teaching you? You just copy what they do on screen, the narrator yada yada is what they're doing, it might make sense, it might not, and then boom, final product. Now I'm not saying don't utilize tutorials, they're a great resource for more experienced developers if you need help figuring something out, but I think there should be a better way for people to learn Unreal Engine when starting out for the first time. So I started working on Unreal Engine Beginner's Course. It's not going to be just another tutorial though, because the point of this series won't be to make a specific game by the end of it or anything. It will instead be about breaking down what things mean, how the different tools work, and hopefully gaining an understanding of how to venture off on your own in Unreal Engine. I know there are Unreal Engine Beginners courses already online, but the ones I saw were pretty lengthy and a little costly, so hopefully mine stands out and people can benefit from it once it releases. Hey, thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Also be sure to join us over on Discord where you can chat with other members of the community and take part in the weekly Gamer Meme Challenge. This week's winner comes to us from The Legend. Hilarious work, I loved it, and yes, Grodd has not been implemented yet, and I realized how funny that was that he was in the first look and hasn't been seen since. If you can, even consider joining the Patreon where you can even become an NPC in the Flash game. I'm currently working on two Patreon member NPCs right now, so it's going to be a ton of fun to add them in once they're finished. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.